So welcome back. In this lecture, we're still focusing on reproductive strategies, but we're interested in infanticide. Now, infanticide is <clears throat> a hot topic, and it's fairly controversial. In the 1970s, the researcher named Hardy, the author of our Mother Nature textbook, she was studying Langer monkeys and identified infanticide and identified a possible adaptive value of infanticide. And because she said, hey, this might be an adaptive behavior on the part of males, um, there was a lot of pushback. People didn't like this idea, right? Infanticide can't be adaptive. It's got to be maladaptive. It can't be evolutionarily selected for. And so there's a lot of information about infanticide scattered throughout our Mother Nature textbook. And so for this particular lecture, I'm um, having you read a little bit from a lot of different chapters and we're going to just address a series of questions about them. I also wouldn't mind you looking at infanticide on Wikipedia to get a feeling for uh, human infanticide in, in our history the, and, and in modern cultures and kind of some of the reasons behind infanticide, at least some of the hypothesized reasons. So check it out. You'd be surprised at how long that uh, Wikipedia entry is. So let's get started by thinking about <clears throat> infanticide. And like I said, there are a series of questions that we're going to address. And these questions in, uh, are on a separate sheet that you can jot down answers for on that separate sheet of paper as your set of notes. So the first question is, okay, um, here we are, sorry, uh, infanticide. And um, we're going to take a look at introducing it, and then we'll talk about some of the specific readings. So first of all, well, what is it? It's the killing of infants or young by members of the same species. And that means that a member of a species will attack and kill a young of its own species in its own population or in a neighboring community. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. And it happens frequently. Okay. <clears throat> Hardy suggested that infanticide is an evolved reproductive strategy, a strategy that animals use to increase their reproductive fitness. So we have to think about that for a bit. Um, here are some examples of animals that practice infanticide. It's been found throughout the animal kingdom. Um, a lot of primates practice infanticide. Dolphins, insects, fish, uh, other mammals, a, a huge variety of animals practice infanticide. And there are different kinds of infanticide. Um, infanticide by males and sometimes by females who are either killing other offspring or killing their own offspring or abandoning them. Uh, specifically, uh, in the examples that you may have heard about are like lions. When a male lion enters a new pride and takes over, he will often attack infants that are not his own, killing them, and then begin breeding with uh, the females in the lionesses in the pride. In prairie dogs, remember prairie dogs live in these um, big communities with a lot of female relatives, but um, some non-female relatives, what we see is that females in the group will kill other infants. And mothers in this group will sometimes abandon their young. And that essentially kills them. What about humans? Do humans practice infanticide? There's strong evidence that <clears throat> in our history, males, uh, males especially raiding males, males raiding a new territory, a new community, uh, would kill, target young, and particularly target males, young males. And um, there is strong evidence of females abandoning offspring and sometimes practicing um, more of a killing of offspring. Okay. okay, so let's take a look at some of these questions that I came up with as I read through Mother Nature. The first is in chapter two, where Hardy starts describing the Langer monkeys and her work with the Langer monkeys. And she found early on, she noticed that when a strange male, uh, a, a, a stranger male, came into a, a new group, he would stalk, he would seek out and stalk 
the infants in the group and systematically kill them, attack them and kill them. And then the mothers of those infants would subsequently become sexually receptive and then mate with that new male territory owner or the new alpha male, if you will, in the group. <clears throat> when she saw this, she hypothesized that maybe, maybe this infanticide evolved as an adaptive behavior on the part of male Langer monkeys. This was in the 1970s, and researchers really pushed back on this, but have subsequently bought into her ideas. Okay? So here's a question for you. According to Hardy in this section, does infanticide in Langer's benefit the group? Because some people thought, well, infanticide is a mechanism for um, population control, right? If the population goes out of control, then there's not enough resources, and then everyone suffers. So a good of the group selection hypothesis would say, yeah, infanticide happens for the good of the group to prevent overpopulation. And Hardy said, this is not true in Langer monkeys. She found that actually infanticide decreases group size to the point of making the groups very, very small and sometimes locally extinguishes groups because of infanticide. Of the, the, the size of the groups get way too small. So this doesn't seem to be the case, at least for Langer monkeys, this good of the group selection, uh, good of the group hypothesis and it's probably not the case for most species. There are some evidence that it is true in, in some species. And then explain how sexual selection, specifically same-sex competition, can lead to the evolution of infanticide. Okay, so Hardy you know, has proposed that infanticide is an adaptive behavior by male monkeys. It enables them to survive and reproduce better than others and should be selected for over time. Is that really what happens? Well, think about a community in which there's strong male-male competition, or maybe another species in which there's female-female competition. A trait like infanticide could help individuals outcompete or outbreed others in the population, right? Um, some in the population, because their offspring were killed, would not leave behind any offspring in the next generation. On the other hand, uh, the infanticidal males, because they are killing other offspring, are able to reproduce and produce more offspring uh, and pass, pass along this trait of infanticidal, being infanticidal, if you will, to their male offspring. So, yeah, it's possible that the, that evolution, I'm sorry, that infanticide evolved as uh, an adaptive behavior in males, at least in the Langer monkeys. Now, is this behavior, male infanticide, adaptive for everyone in the community? No, it's not a strategy that benefits females at all, right? All of a female's investment in an offspring, in an infant, has um, been systematically wiped out by infanticidal males. And so uh, in this community, the Langer monkeys, the males and females are butting heads, right? What benefits the male doesn't benefit the female in any way. Okay. So that leads to um, female behaviors that attempt to kind of uh, attempt to um, deal with infanticide, infanticidal males. And that leads us to our second, um, our, our second reading in Mother Nature, and that is from chapter 4, pages 86 through 90. Reproductive discretion, we'll call this, or how do females respond to infanticidal males? So um, Hardy actually proposes that females have evolved responses that, uh, that attempt to prevent infanticide, infanticide of, of, of males, or uh, cut their losses, so to speak, in terms of um, cutting their losses for an investment in offspring. In other words, um, Hardy suggests that there are evolutionary responses that females have made to infanticide of males. And here are some examples of cutting their losses, if you will. Um, 
I have a couple of examples here. One of them fits right in this category. Explain some of the options females have for cutting their losses in a reproductive effort. So there are some things that um, females do that will kind of in prevent males from committing infanticide. And one of those is discussed in our Mother Nature book. And it has to do with chimps. It turns out that female chimps, when they're um, when they're sexually receptive, will mate with, you know, maybe a uh, hundred, mate a hundred times with as many as a dozen or more different males, the text says. Why do they do so much mating? What's happening here? Why so many different males? We think that this might be a strategy that females have evolved to, um, to make it hard for males to know or to be certain of paternity, to know whose offspring is that little infant. And so females will often um, seek out males from different communities to mate with, with her. Even under, this is stressful to go into a different community for a female. She may be attacked by other females. She may inherit, she may get um, sexually transmitted diseases, but she goes into other communities and mates with males from other communities if she can. She mates with a lot of males from the same community that she's a part of. And we think this is in, in a way to um, kind of prevent, um, prevent the males from uh, knowing whose offspring does she actually have, and that will prevent infanticide or will um, prevent the uh, possibility of the likelihood of infanticide or at least lower the likelihood of infanticide. So sometimes females will do things like uh, be promiscuous in order to reduce certainty of paternity. Other females will cut their losses in a reproductive effort, and by that I mean um, they will do things like a number of different rodent species. Check these guys out. I'm going to read you this. A far more common pattern among other species of rodents, however, is for a mother to terminate investment prior to birth because she has reason to fear male interference. That means male um, uh, uh, infanticide. In house mice, deer mice, dungerian, hamsters, collared lemmings, and some species of voles, pregnant females respond to the arrival of a strange, potentially infanticidal male in their territory by doing this, by reabsorbing their embryos. They reabsorb their pregnancy. When a stranger male arrives, or when the scent of a stranger male is detected, pregnant females will reabsorb their pregnancy. It's one way to cut their losses, so to speak, to, uh, to, to, to stop investing in something that's just going to be worth less in the, in the long run. If they continue with the pregnancy, give birth, and then have the infants killed, that, um, that seems like a worse situation than cutting their losses and um, reabsorbing the pregnancy. Researchers have even found that um, spontaneous abortion happens in uh, some monkeys, some pregnant monkeys. Uh, baboons, langurs, uh, and a few other species when their social group is um, taken over by a stranger male. Pretty interesting, huh? Um, something that could have evolved in response to male infanticide. Oh, and here's something interesting. Uh, what kind of reproductive problems do female chimps who live on the margins of a community face? So there's a little bit of um, talk in this in in all of mother nature about this chimp named Flo. Maybe you you read about her, heard about her. She uh, Jane Goodall documented um, Flo and her basically her dynasty. Flo lived to be like 42 years old. She had lots and lots of offspring. She was very successful. She lived in the center of a social group and she could control and prevent infanticide by um, by her status. But, but for female chimps who, are, who have lower status, who live on the margins of the community, they kind of face a double whammy. Their neighboring males could, come, um, could meet up with them, males from different communities, and uh, kill their infants. Or males in their very own group could kill, um, could, are more likely to kill the infants because uh, they might suspect the, these uh, marginal females 
from consorting with the enemy, from, from mating with, with the next door neighbor, so to speak. And at this point, females have females at the margins of chimpanzee communities have very little choice. They, they don't have a lot of choice. Because of their low status, they're at much higher risk for infanticide of their infants, and infanticide particularly of their male infants. Uh, males tend to uh, be um, discriminating and kill male offspring or male infants more than uh, female infants. In any case, it gives you a feeling um, that this isn't the best situation for females. This isn't her choice. This isn't her. This isn't good for her. But it's um, what she's stuck with. It's the best choice that the only thing she can do, given her status, given her conditions. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a look at infanticide by males in human cultures next. As soon as I can get out of here. <laughs>